This is a presentation over the new information released to us by College Board. Get ready for a flood of information. So to start off this presentation, I would like to share with you a picture I found. This picture, y'all, is taken of a space shuttle escaping the Earth's atmosphere. How lucky are we to be able to take a picture like this? People in the Roaring Twenties didn't even think about space travel. America's fascination with space grew up in the 1950s and 60s. Our first space shuttle launched in 1981. Oh my, how far we've traveled. <laughs> this is an analogy for how far we've traveled this year. So keep at it y'all, anything is possible. And with that, we have six weeks before our exam date, May 18th. 2020 at 3 p.m. This is the only date you can take the exam unless there's an extenuating circumstance, and that can only be approved by the school. If you need the makeup date, you can look that information up on College Board. It's also posted on my Canvas as well. I highly recommend that you keep to the schedule because just in case there's a technology problem during the May 18th administration, you have an extra chance to retake the exam on the makeup date. But if you are banking on just the makeup date itself, uh, if you, there's any technical difficulties there, you won't be able to make up that part. Specifics of the exam. Your exam will be a 45 minute exam consisting of two FRQs. You will have 25 minutes to read and respond to question one, and then five minutes to upload your response. After uploading your response to question one, you will have 15 minutes to respond to question number two, with five additional minutes to upload your response to question two. Once you have submitted your response to question one, you may not go back. Let's break down the information about the two questions. They are weighted differently, with question one being 60% of your exam. Question one is about designing an investigation. Students will be presented with an authentic environmental scenario, accompanied by either a model or visual representation or quantitative data, and may assess students' abilities to describe and or explain environmental concepts, processes, and models presented in written format, analyze visual representations or data, analyze research studies that test environmental principles, and finally, describe environmental problems and or potential responses. Your second question is worth 40% of your exam. It is about analyzing an environmental problem and proposing a solution. This question presents students with an authentic environmental scenario accompanied by either a model or visual representation or quantitative data and may assess students' ability to describe and or explain environmental concepts, processes, and models presented in written format. Analyze visual representations or data, propose and justify solutions to environmental problems. So this exam is considered open book or open note. This doesn't mean it will be easy, y'all. All this means is that you no longer will have easy questions that ask things like identify two primary pollutants. Those are questions that ask for things you have memorized. It most likely will be a question that will have many correct answers as long as you have the right justification. Designing an experiment would be one of them. There are many different ways to design an experiment, proper and improper ways as well. So we're going to be going over each of these scientific principles throughout the next six weeks. Next point is that you may take this exam on any device, but a major note highlighted in red. Whichever device you choose to receive your exam on, you must use the same device to submit your exam. Can't st stress this enough. For example, if you choose to type your exam, I recommend you use your laptop to receive your exam question and submit your answers by typing it out. If you choose to handwrite your answer, I highly recommend that you use your cell phone as a receiving device. If you use your cell phone, just note that the screen is much, much smaller. 
I highly recommend not handwriting your answers just because there's no math or subscripts or superscripts that you will have to write out. You don't want to receive it on a small screen. There is a method to receive your exam on a laptop and handwrite your answer, but the process is tricky for a five minute window. What you have to do if you want to use this process is to handwrite your exam, take a picture, transfer that picture to your laptop, and submit the file on your laptop to the testing uh, application. That sounds like a nightmare if you don't have to do it. So do not risk it, y'all. Just type it up. In late April, College Board will provide students and teachers with information on how to access the testing system on test day and a video demonstration so that students can familiarize themselves with the system. Your AP exam will be scored the same way on a scale of 1 through 5. Scores will be released as close to the regular schedule in July. To help support teachers in schools that are struggling to collect and score student work for course grades, College Board pr will provide every t AP teacher with their students' responses from the online exams by May 26th. Administrators and teachers can individually determine whether they'd like to use these results locally as part of a course grade or as a final exam. Again, this decision is up to LCISD. Whatever the district decides is what is going to happen. I don't have that information for you right now, so I will release it to you as soon as I get it from the district level. So now we will go over the testing security released by College Board. All of the verbiage is copied and pasted from the College Board site, so there is no incorrect interpretation of what is being communicated. So first off, this is an open book or open note exam. However, you cannot communicate with other individuals during the testing period. College Board is taking necessary steps here. Uh, they state that the vast majority of students will follow the rules, but there are a small number of students who may try to gain an unfair advantage. College Board have a comprehensive and strict set of protocols in place to prevent and detect cheating. Some are kept a secret and I will not share what College Board has shared with me from their video conference. Others are listed on the next slide. The exam format and questions are designed to be taken at home. No points will be earned for simply copying content from a textbook or online. This means, y'all, that there will be no simple definition questions you defining a term that you memorize throughout the year. This is now the time to practice applying if we are going to be studying for this exam. Each subject will be taken on the exam day at the same time. On test day, students will be required to verify their identity and confirm the work they submitted is their own. College Board is using a range of digital security tools and techniques to protect the integrity of the exam. Plagiarism detection software and post-administration analytics are some of the examples listed, and there will be some that are not published as well in order to protect the integrity of the exam. In addition, students' AP teachers will receive copies of the work the student submits to College Board, enabling teachers to spot inconsistencies with students' known work. Students whose responses mirror online content or other student submissions will have their scores canceled. Students sharing or receiving exam content or exam responses or engaging in any plans or efforts to provide or gain an unfair advantage will be blocked from testing or their AP scores will be canceled. If College Board determines that a student gained or provided an unfair advantage on an AP exam, they will notify their high school so that the school can choose to take necessary disciplinary action as appropriate. College Board will provide the information about the incident to colleges and other organizations to which students has already sent any College Board scores, including SAT scores, or to which the student would send scores in the future. Students who attempt to gain an unfair advantage also may be prohibited from taking a future AP exam, as well as the SAT, SAT subject tests, or CLEP assessments. 
under certain circumstances, the College Board may inform law enforcement of any incident to determine if prosecution of the test taker or anyone assisting the test taker in misconduct is warranted. Lastly, there is a link College Board is providing to report test security confidentially. Now that we are done with the test security information, I want to dive into some test taking strategies. So, open book or open note exams are not easy. I want to repeat that. Open book or open note exams are not that easy. Exhibit A would be your online quizzes. Once we switch from the paper quizzes to the online quizzes, grades actually dropped because y'all stopped studying intensely for it, thinking that you may have access to your notes and it will be fine, but those 12 minutes on those quizzes went by pretty quickly. And on the AP exam, y'all, it is timed for 25 minutes and 15 minutes respectively. You won't have a lot of time to look up information. Memorizing the information will save you time in order to pull facts out and be able to justify your responses. Remember, we're going to be applying the knowledge, not simply presenting it. This part of the studying, the memorization part, the practicing of the applying of knowledge will take preparation. The exam this year is designed to apply concepts from your notes and resources in new ways. Copying what you have done in the past won't produce a satisfactory answer here. The internet can be an excellent source of data and facts, but also misinformation, diverging opinions, and manipulated content. In the experience of our faculty, students taking open book or open note exams who try to find answers on the internet often find fewer points than students who use their time to apply their learning to develop a logical response. Collaborating with others is not considered acceptable open notes. Let's repeat that again, y'all. Collaborating with others is not considered open notes. It is strictly forbidden to give or receive aid during the exam. Any students found using the work of others exchanging or sharing information on exam topics, collaborating via any online platform, or soliciting tips for problem-solving approaches will be investigated for violating exam security. You can get this college credit. We have six weeks to prepare, y'all. We know what the exam looks like now, and we will structure and prepare your review practices around the essential skills you will need to be successful. I am planning on creating a presentation on experimental design and good science practices so you guys would have facts to apply whatever scenario they may throw at you. Okay, I have learned these practices over many years as well as my time at Baylor College of Medicine. This, y'all, will be rolled out later. Please remember, we can provide you with many resources, but at the end of the day, it is still up to you to practice these skills truthfully. Let's make every single day count. Balance your time wisely if you have a lot of other AP classes. Have fun and take breaks as well because this is a marathon, not a sprint. Remember to set aside time to study. I recommend 15 to 30 minutes of reviewing a day following that review calendar schedule. And as we get closer to the exam date, you ramp it up to more time. Do the review book, watch the Bozeman video, practice the problems we will be providing to y'all. You guys can do this, y'all. You guys can do this. And with that, I hope you guys have a good day.